Well, good morning again. Another week has passed and we're here for a few minutes again to learn about the Believer's Authority. Last week we ended with the fact that we need to believe what is ours by faith. So let us get started with a portion of scripture we were to read during the week. That is Ephesians 2 verse 1 to 7. Verse 1, and you, as he quickened, underline that you. Who is this you? You who were dead in trespasses and sins. Wherein, in time past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Verse 4. But God, underline that boldly, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace are ye saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Now, the same verb that expresses the raising of Christ from the dead in Ephesians verse 1, chapter 1 verse 20, sorry, is the exact same verb expressing the raising of the people here in Ephesians 2 verse 1. This means that the act of God that raised Jesus from the dead also raised his body. And the Bible says we are the body of Christ. Is that not so? So, in God's eyes, when he raised Jesus from the dead, we were raised from the dead. Wow, isn't that awesome? Now verses 5 and 6 says, Even when we were dead in sins, hath he quickened us together with Christ, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Note that the head, who is Jesus Christ, and the body, who is the church, the believers, me and you, were raised together. When the authority was given to the head, it was also given to the body. The head and the body are one. When we think of somebody, do you don't just think of a head? He's a complete person, head and body. Remember that. Most churches believe that when Christ was raised, we were raised from the dead with Him. But they have a problem believing that we've been seated with Him. Now my question is this. If one part of the verse is true and is accepted, why do they have a problem accepting the other part? If one part is true, the other part must be true as well. Not so. When we realize that the authority that belongs to Jesus also belongs to each of us and is available to us, our lives will be changed. It will explode. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 to 14 and verse 27. For as the body is one and as many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. We are the body of Christ. But I just want to interject here with a warning. The scripture also warns in 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14 and 15 not to be equal, unequally yoked, that light and darkness 
cannot have communion. That righteous and unrighteous cannot have fellowship. You cannot be part of the body and part of the world. Okay? Let us continue with our teaching. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 17 But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit, meaning we are one with Christ. We are seated at the right hand of majesty on high. So all things have been put under our feet. What I'm going to say now might shock you, but please hear me out. We have preached across religion instead of a throne religion. Yes, Jesus did die on the cross and we need to come by the cross for salvation. But Jesus didn't stay on the cross. He arose. He ascended to heaven and He is seated at the right hand of His Father, this, the place of authority. We need to come by the cross for salvation. But there's the ascension. There's Pentecost. And Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. You see, the cross is the place of defeat. When He was raised, it's the place of authority and triumph. Where is He now? Not on the cross. The work on the cross, He finished. It's completed, paid in full. He is seated at the right hand of His Father, which is our position, seated with Christ in the place of authority in heavenly places. Many Christians don't know much about the believer's authority. They don't believe that they have authority. They believe that one day in heaven we will have authority. We won't need it then. The enemy won't be there. Wow. So many believe that we are saved just to get by, you know, just barely get by. So that we must remain humble. And we need to live in defeat because that keeps us humble. What utter nonsense. It's completely contrary to the Word of God. We need to be delivered from this bondage, this thinking, this death and walk in the newness of life. Yes. We died with Christ, with Christ, but God has raised us together with Christ. What we need to do is learn to take our place of authority. The right hand of the throne of God is the center of the power of the whole universe. Have you ever thought of that? You. Exercising the power of the throne was committed to our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Now according to Hebrews 1 verse 13, we know that Jesus, with his resurrected body, is there in full possession of his rights, awaiting the Father's time when his enemies will be made his footstool. Now the elevation of Christ's people with him into the heavenlies points to the fact that we are to sit with him sharing not only His throne, but also His authority. That authority belongs to us. Jesus gave it to us. Now I want you to read Romans 5 verse 17. I'm reading from the Amplified this time. For if because of one man's trespass, his lapse or his offense, death reigned through that one, and we know who that one was, that was Adam, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace his unmerited favour and the free gift of righteousness, putting them in right standing with God Himself, reign as kings in life. I'm going to read that again. Reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. It is clear we are to reign as kings in life through Jesus. Not in ourselves, but through Him. We partake of the authority that is Christ, that His throne represents. Now, some people or some believers have exercised a little more authority than others because they have 
a little bit more spiritual understanding of this authority. But God wants all of his people, all of his children, to have this spiritual understanding. By the Holy Spirit, Paul prayed that we might have wisdom, understanding and authority over demonic powers, and then that we have havoc with our minds. You see, the most difficult thing for the church seems to maintain balance. You can take any subject and push it to the extreme, to the extent that it becomes harmful and ceases to bless. And I'm basically done. And I'm just going to give you one example of somebody who did this. There was this man who called himself Father Divine. He took this very teaching and he said, well, if we've been raised up with Christ, we are one with Christ, that makes him Christ. Christ is God, so he is God. You know what he did? He started a cult and people started to worship him. Now that's pushing it to the extreme. Totally. But then, let us just stay in the middle of the road and maintain balance. And I want to take you to another example. And that is John Alexander Dowie. He was a Scotsman who really received a revelation of healing, divine healing. And he crossed the oceans many times. And he said every time a storm came up, you know what he did? He says, I just did what Jesus did. I rebuked the storm. <laughs> and the storm ceased. Well, he says it always ceased. Not only sometimes, when he rebuked the storm, it always ceased. This should not amaze us. Why? Because Jesus himself said in John 14 verse 12, He that believeth on me, the works that I shall do, he shall do, the works that I do, sorry, he shall do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Now, most people always want to know about the greater works. What are they? Or what greater works can they be? Well, uh, listen, just hold on. Let's first do the works that Jesus did. And the rest will follow. Now, in closing, you're going to say I'm repeating myself. I'm repeating myself for a reason. So that it will sink in. That we will grasp this and understand. Jesus did not say only a few select people will do these works. He said those who believe on him would. Do you believe? Well, if you do, then according to Jesus' own words, you can do the works that Jesus did. Now, as we continue looking at the word and what the word says about the authority of the believer, I am sure we will start walking in this truth more and more. But we cannot just believe it and not grasp it and take it for ourselves. There's many things you can believe and not take it by faith. So let us take this, believe it, take it by faith and start walking in this truth more and more. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, your only Son. And Lord, we want to thank you for your great love that you had towards us, even while we were in sin. Father, that your word says that you raised us up together with Jesus and seated us with Jesus. Help us, Lord, to understand, to grasp, and to realize what you have done for us. Not only what Jesus has done, but, Lord, through him, you have done so much for us. Help us to grasp and understand and to walk in that which you have given us. Father, help us to make it our own and to walk in that. Help us, Father, that we will always know that it's not in our power, but it's through and in Jesus Christ that we have this wonderful gift from you. Father, I pray that you bless each and every one that may be watching this short message at this moment. And I pray, Father, open the eyes of the understanding that they will grasp the subject as we say that the penny will drop and that we will walk and do that which you intended for your church to do. 
we give you honor and praise for truly your greatness is beyond words. Be glorified, be honored in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See you next time. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing praise to your name, God. Come and see what the Lord has done, how awesome his works in man's behalf. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. He rules forever by his power. His eyes watch the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him. Praise our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping for you, O oh God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let men ride over our heads when we went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. Come and listen, all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. For I cried out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and heard my voice in prayer. Praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me.
心。